two CPUs, 12 sticks of RAM, but no hard drive cage. Introducing Gladiator 2016. The highlight of this build is the fact that it has two processors. I have two Intel 5650 six core server processors equipped with a 2.66 GHz clock speed, 3 GHz boost, and hyper threading for a total of 12 cores and 24 threads. The motherboard which will be holding all this madness is the Supermicro X8 DTI-F which supports two of the 5500 and 5600 Intel series processors and has 12 DIMM slots for RAM which is insane. Speaking of RAM, we'll be sporting 40 gigs of registered ECC DDR3 at 1333 MHz. Also, I'll be using some Hyper 212s to cool down the CPUs, even though this motherboard doesn't support overclocking, because keeping your components as cool as possible is never a bad idea, and these older server chips can stay pretty warm on a passive cooler regardless. To power this all, I have a 750 watt EVGA 80 plus bronze rated power supply, which technically is more power than I need, but comes equipped with a second CPU power cable, which I needed for obvious reasons. Also, to make sure we had room for gaming, I included a GeForce GTX 1060. We shouldn't have any issues playing any game at 1080p. Finally, the reason why the build is named Gladiator, the Ultra Gladiator. This is actually the case I bought in early 2010 to build my first gaming PC. It's been laying around dormant for the last few years with the exception of holding the test system for my first video on this channel, so it was the perfect candidate for modding. I painted the case, GPU shroud, Hyper 212s, and a few fan mounts white for the black, white, and blue theme of this build. You can check out that video above, but I've done enough talking for this video. Now it's time to put all the parts together. So to wrap up the build, I want to mention some snags that every PC enthusiast has to face at some point in time when putting together their own system, and also mention some snags that are unique to Gladiator. The first issue was that the backplates of this motherboard were actually incompatible with the Hyper 212s. Thankfully a quick Google search showed that you could put some standard M3 motherboard standoffs to mount the coolers as a replacement for the mounts that come in the box. I'll link the ones I bought below if you decide to build a system like this yourself. The next one is one I mentioned in part one of this video, where the case I'm using is actually built for standard ATX motherboards. Server boards tend to have varying sizes, and this one in particular is extended ATX, which is just a few centimeters longer than standard ATX. 
Fortunately, it was possible to simply remove some of the components in the case, as well as drill my own motherboard standoffs to expand the amount of space available for the motherboard. I also used hot glue and electrical tape where necessary in order to avoid any metal touching the motherboard, which ultimately would cause a short, and we all know what happens when you have a short. Which leads me to the next point, and the biggest snag of them all. My motherboard died. If you saw my last video or you're following me on Twitter, you know that my motherboard died during the initial testing of the system. I was at a loss for words because after all the testing I had done, I had no idea how the system was able to start multiple times and then all of a sudden die. Thankfully, the company on eBay, which I'll link below, who I bought this from, shipped me a new one within a few days and it's been running fine ever since. A slightly less frustrating but equally disappointing find was that only 10 of the 12 RAM sticks I bought are functioning properly. I was actually able to determine this using my first motherboard, but having the same result on the replacement motherboard solidified the findings, but honestly, I was originally only going to put 6 sticks in the system anyway, which is 24 gigs, so I'm not too bummed with the end result of 40 gigs. Also, I like the aesthetic of having all the slots filled, so I'm just going to leave the dead sticks in there unless you guys can convince me otherwise. Finally, one of the most obvious snags is cable management. The lack of cable management in this situation is also due to the fact that the case is technically incompatible with my server motherboard, so I may in the future integrate this system into a proper case with adequate cable management, but I'm ecstatic with the outcome so far anyway. Now as a note, Gladiator 2016 is called Gladiator 2016 for a reason. Although this build is already sporting some great bang for buck hardware, I expect that it will grow alongside the channel. Some modifications that may happen sooner rather than later, however, are installing a fan controller for the 3-pin LED fans on the Hyper 212s, adding an RGB LED strip, and possibly adding better CPUs and larger capacity RAM sticks. In case you're wondering why I would need a CPU fan controller, unless a CPU fan is 4-pin, the motherboard won't be able to communicate with it to adjust the fan speed. Only a fan controller can adjust the voltage, which will allow me to use those 3-pin fans and also maintain some peace and quiet, which the system is actually pretty loud as it is. Also, I love my GTX 1060, but who knows how long it will be until that gets an upgrade as well. As a sneak peek for part three of the Gladiator build, where I'll be benchmarking the gaming and rendering performance of this new PC, I ran Cinebench and the score was higher than I'll probably ever score again for a while. And if you were wondering what it was, it managed to pull off a So be sure to watch part three coming soon where I will have those final results and more. Sorry, that was a bad joke, but really I'm aiming to put up part three shortly after Black Friday since I'm going to do some fun benchmarks and I actually wanna buy some games and equipment beforehand. So again, keep your eyes peeled for that. I have to give a quick shout out to Brian from Tech City who helped inspire this build after he made Dunacron, his dual Xeon workstation. I'll link that video in the description as well. Thanks for experiencing my new workstation build with me. Click the like button if you're looking forward to the benchmarks and comment below letting me know if you have any thoughts or questions. Also subscribe to the channel for more tech content like this. I'm Lee from ComTV. I actually wanna show you guys something. I have almost like a little Easter egg here. So if you look in the front of the case, which let me focus this. Um, these are actually all of the stickers I've ever owned through my builds. Of This isn't all of them, there are some missing, but you know, no one ever really uses these stickers. And I also have nothing to put in here because I don't use optical drive. So there's a little Easter egg and I'll know it's there, but no one else will.